Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today is going to be naturally a larger video. I have this scripted, I'm going to do my absolute best to keep it as short as possible. But because there's so much to cover, it's going to naturally be long and I apologize for that. But real quick, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe and let's get right into it. So first, let's cover the layout of today's video. I'm going to timestamp it to make it as accessible for you guys and shorten it to the things that are important to you. First, we're going to start with an introduction and we're going to talk about major milestones that I've hit recently and what inspired this video. We're going to go into a very brief explanation of how we learn from birth in terms of aiming. We're going to discuss how to obtain high precision. Then we're going to cover really fast tips on high precision, high and of course versus low accuracy. Then we're going to cover the massive scenario list on Kovax and how you can translate this to end game aim. When I cover the scenarios, I'm going to do my absolute best to do a quick 30 second explanation, show the scenario on screen, talk about the goal, what to learn, and brief tips. So let's just kick it off with the introduction, shall we? So for those who have subscribed to my channel, you know I put countless hours into aim trainers to obtain insane aim and accuracy. And honestly, it still feels like i got a long way to go. Well, yesterday, January 22nd, we achieved a major milestone. We hit masters on Voltaic benchmarks. This is from the video series I shared in terms of benchmarks and breaking down your aim. I have them all in the description down below. So everything I talk about in this channel, I put into practice in real time. The scenario I hit masters on last was static aim, which is surprisingly has become my weakest in terms of my overall accuracy and aim. Hence the start of this video. Remember your aim will shift consistently on what you're weak on as you improve in other areas. This is my biggest weakness, which is why I'm making this video on how to obtain overall better accuracy. Believe it or not, this scenario list came recommended from one of you guys in the comment section. And even though I hit masters voltaic, this scenario list still kicks me in the butt and is very challenging. Also note this is a playlist that tens pushes as well, so shout out and credit to him. I find it crazy how I can target switch track and hit moving targets better than I can hit targets standing still. It's pretty wild, but it makes sense. We all know how all the easiest shots are the hardest. This is how professionals are always whiffing those quick and easy shots. How the small movements can be just more challenging and difficult. The larger swings are naturally easier. Well. I went online and I was searching for an answer on this. Why is this the case? So I came across a lot of websites and I did my own digging just as you guys are looking for YouTube content online that when we're born, the first thing we learn to do is move our arms. That's what we're doing. We flail. And then as we get older, that's how we learn to do the refined movement of grabbing things with our fingers. That comes a little later. From birth, we're even trained knowing larger movements are easier to learn first. Thus, the same with our small finger movement for precision. No matter the sensitivity that you run high or low, you're always going to have to use your fingers in terms of hitting some sort of small micro shot. It's just naturally going to happen. So in this video, we're going to focus on how the easier and static targets, which in turn are going to become everyone's biggest enemy, and how do we refine that for improved aim and high precision. First, how do you obtain high precision? Well, naturally, you're going to need to practice a lot. Practice is important, but please note for anyone in the comments that to obtain insane aim in any game, you need to practice in that specific game. These exercises in this video explanation are to push you beyond your limits once you plateau in game to avoid making bad mistakes or even to learn to experiment with sensitivities to improve your mouse control. Mouse control is key and over the course of hours and time this is naturally going to translate. But in game, remember, you can have insane aim but have no brain. But in game, mechanics are very vital. Do not forget them. I see even more so they are important to build good game sense. Remember this process is very slow. Don't get discouraged. And don't be misled by those videos online that state, I got insane aim in a month. They did get some level of aim, but to achieve an aim like no other, it does take time. And of course, some of these individuals sometimes have a history of playing FPS shooters for a very long time. For me to hit masters just in the Voltaic benchmarks, it took me about a year and a half. I had great aim, especially in sniping, but I needed discipline and to remove bad habits. And I still today have a very long way to go. This video today, I want to be as truthful and honest into giving you a realistic answer and for you to be patient as you continue to grow and improve. An example, you can initially work out and have your body change. But then as you push past your body limits and build muscle, you're going to start to stagnate. You're going to realize that those exercises when you're doing push-ups or sit-ups isn't getting you the net worth and benefits like it did before. That's what these scenarios are built for. And this is as you become more professional in gaming, how you get better. With that, remember to diligently practice. It does not mean you have to put six or seven hours a day. But if you're diligent in your practice and you make sure to spread it out, 
Even 5, 15, 30 minutes a day can be massively beneficial. Remember variables matter, and don't be afraid to change them to test things out and stimulate your brain. Here's a quick list of some things that you can change. And of course, if you have more to add, don't forget to put them in the comment section down below. Some quick ones are change your mouse pad, your mouse sensitivity, your mice feet, your sitting position, wireless versus wired, change your mouse, change your grip style, or just your overall in-game settings. Now, I want to cover some quick, fast tips to remember as you work on hitting high precision, fast, and accuracy. Overall, just encompassing everything. Number one, relax. To garner speed, you need to relax your muscles. If you tense up too much, you restrict blood flow and will naturally lose speed. You ever seen a gunslinger from a Western? He removes the tension. He usually wiggles his fingers to build speed. Just kind of get the blood flowing, but he's relaxing at the same time. You see his hand off to the side relax. You don't see it necessarily just all clenched up, but then in one fail swoop, he pulls out from his holster a mix between tension and relaxation. If he's completely tense or too nervous, then of course he's going to lose speed. That's important to note, especially when you're in game, a game like a battle royale. It can be very tense. And to remove that tension, for those asking for a battle royale, just draw a pot and remember to relax and have fun. Number two, get into a flow state. This means having hyper focus on your task. I call the flow state when the world around you just disappears and all that matters is the task at hand. You're calm, but also hyper aware. For me, music helps us. For others, I've notated meditation and some of the biggest ones, especially when you're aiming, is don't forget to breathe. Number three, high sensitivity users. Focus on bouncing between targets and removing that complete stop at a high sensitivity. The issue with the high sensitivity is the acceleration and deacceleration that takes time and sometimes that can help you lose a monumental amount of time. High sensitivity is obviously going to help you get from point A to point B, but once you're at the in-between point of point A and point B, you have to make the smallest movements to hit the target accurately. The issue here for a faster sensitivity is that you, as you create this bounce, you're going to lose accuracy. But remember to keep that bounce and momentum in your aim. So depending on your aim, you need to focus more so on having a less sharp movement and more of a flow. So for low sensitivity users, some quick tips. You have the opposite issue. You need to focus on not getting lazy with your aim and you need to be hyper engaged with your muscles. Acceleration is less of an issue because you're having large broad movements with your arms, just like we spoke about before, but you need to keep the constant movement. If you find your shoulders or other muscles are too tense, try to relax them stretch which is going to be the next tip but please be careful and be mindful to avoid too much repetition in those joints and hurting yourself so when we talk about that number five stretching don't forget to in between these exercises that a lot of time can pass even if you do them five times it's five minutes they can be a little intense so remember to get up and move around in game you're never going to have to put this amount of stress because you don't you're not always in a gunfight right away correct so get up move around reset mentally and physically now let's get into the scenario list. The benefit of watching these scenarios, even if you don't have Kovacs, is you can utilize it as a basis for your own in aim labs, in a game, or any other way. Don't feel like you're forced to buy Kovacs. You can even hop into Valorant test range and replicate this by hitting headshots and creating a bounce in momentum. But overall, I hope this help gives you an overall goal and perhaps may enlighten you what you need to improve and work on. You can make a scenario list in Kovacs by making a playlist and adding how many times you want to play the scenario. Or you can just, you know, look them up on the online scenario by name, and then boom, you're good to go. So let's begin with, first up, 5 Sphere Hit Fire Extra Small. This one is massive in refining your aim, and the goal is to get used to refining small muscle control. This one is even harder than the Voltaic benchmark of 6 Sphere targets because the actual targets are even smaller. But the issue you'll find is how slow you are to get to the target and the amount of time you pause and making the micro adjustment to hit the target. Work on that bounce. And of course, find the bounce between speed and accuracy. Remember, as you speed up, you're gonna have less accuracy. And the more accuracy you have, then of course, the less speed you're gonna have between targets. So find that balance. So next up, Vox target switch, click small. Like Vox target switch where you track, this one only requires that you hit the target once to eliminate it. Like I mentioned, I feel very comfortable between target switching, but there's something about the tension of hitting the target the right the first time. And rather than tracking, you need to click once. This overall exercise will require more precision and more time and can be really annoying and frustrating. But if you nail it and you create a bounce, even regular target switching when controlling recoil is gonna become way easier for you. So this obviously helps hitting targets also on the move. 
The goal, find the balance between static and movement. Next up, floating heads timing 400%. This is one like pat target switch, but on, I consider, I guess, steroids. The comparison is like in-game when trying to hit that headshot on that small target. Well, this scenario is to build that muscle control for you. You got a slight, small, and still needs to switch between targets. It's very difficult, but very helpful. Next up, reflex, micro, plus, plus, flick, reload, small. Everyone loves grid shot or tile frenzy, but the realistic scenario is... Like this one, you're going to be flicking between targets for high accuracy, and you can't really spam your shots to cheese it. If you miss, well, you're going to lose time, and that's going to help you lose score. Very beneficial as you become a better aimer in FPS gamer, so if you're a seasoned player and have great crosshair placement, your movement requirement is going to be smaller to adjust for the shot, and obviously it's going to be smaller. This is a scenario that helps prep you for those smaller adjustments. Next up, pet target switch small, no reload. I feel the Voltaic one is a bit more difficult in terms of pat target switch. This was also one of the first scenarios I got masters on, was also probably the best part of my aim. What I love about the scenario is the great target switching and shooting as if you had a machine gun in hand. Not about a single reload, but flick and small tracking adjustments. The goal is to improve your target switching between spraying without recoil. So you're kind of building the fundamentals. This can be beneficial for Valorant and CSGO with your AK-47 target switches or perhaps Battlefield as you're flicking between sprays, or even the most relevant currently is COD Warzone, which I feel definitely applies as you're switching between various targets and flicking, because the recoil isn't insane, but you definitely need to flick as fast as humanly possible, more or less to the body so the recoil hits their head. So good to re remove the recoil and a great scenario. Let's move on quickly. So Pokeball Frenzy Auto Small Wide. This one is going to frustrate you because the goal of this scenario is to demand larger movement then force you immediately into small refined movement to land a shot. That balance and the bounce is really difficult and really hard so don't get discouraged on this because in some stances you may even need to change grip styles in a way. For some that kind of flex between grip styles when you want to become more accurate, perhaps you use a claw grip style and then now you kind of switch to a fingertip grip to, you know, build speed and momentum but this is really good as you blend between the small and large movements now let's talk about pistol strafe gallery small like possible scenarios this one is fantastic it does not only require first shot accuracy but follow-up shots the goal of this scenario is to get you used to constant follow-up shots if required you can keep flicking and do micro shots as your goal but you may find you'll get tired or you'll have lower accuracy. You can track it, but it may be unrealistic to do it all the time to attain 100% accuracy. You're gonna find that bounce in your shot, very much like the wingman in Apex Legends, you're gonna do mini flicks to adjust or occasionally track the remaining shots depending on when the target changes direction. So that's where you can find the comparison. Centering one 180, this is gonna smooth out your aim like no other and push you to remember to flex and track. The goal of this scenario is to smooth out your aim. Same as Smoothbot, but it's a great blending of movement together. The best explanation, going from a seated position to a standing one. You can jump out of your chair, right? But let's say you need to work on the movement in between to be stealthy, to increase your muscle control as you're standing up. Well, the remaining muscles in your body need to be worked and grow as well. This is a great scenario, and apologies on the really weird explanation, but it's kind of what I typed up on the script to help you guys out. Moving on, two more. One wall, two target, reload. We go back and keep it simple on flicking between two targets. The goal here is not getting comfortable on seeing the targets all at one time like we did at the start, but they appear in front of you and you cannot necessarily set up for the immediate shot afterward. You have to react and there is some distance in between. This helps in most scenarios in game and you're going to react for the first shot. This is going to help you find that balance. Now to wrap everything up, Valorant Microshot Speed Small. We take that prior scenario to another level and are reacting to small targets. Reacting to a large target with some distance is relatively easy, but if it's a small target and peers in front, it's very difficult. This will help you with precision and accuracy for headshots, getting comfortable with micro movement. It's a complete opposite of the first scenario that if you saw all the targets at once, and of course if you're watching to the end of the video thus far. Again, these scenarios, as it breaks down different aspects of your aim, you can apply them in-game and practice. Maybe you hit only headshots on target dummies. Maybe you focus on them when they move in the test range and go for quick headshots and find a flow from bouncing between targets like we've discussed in this video. These scenarios break down to the bare basics and it's up to you to work on the muscles to improve it. 
Again, if you're watching till the end, I did my best to keep all these explanations brief to the point to be helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all next time.